Hello guys and welcome to today's Atlantic Tropical Update. Uh, it is May 23rd, 2020. And uh, today we're going to be taking a look at a couple of things here. Like a look at the GFS. Tomorrow I'm going to be looking at other models, but I got a few other things I'm going to be looking over here today. So we're going to take a look at the future GFS here. Now we're going to go all the way out through time. So bear in mind that whatever you see past day seven at least, or at the most, just take it with a grain of salt. It's probably not going to happen. It's a could or would have situation. And as you can see, we got a few lows here. This is a system, and uh, believe it or not, Arthur is infused in this. So Arthur's uh, rotation is still around here after uh, a week and a half. It's, uh, <clears throat> it's being uh, pushed away by this high pressure right here and uh, being taken control by this high right here. So all this stuff <clears throat> will be moving this way over the next couple of days towards uh, Europe and uh, right here we got a pretty potent storm in 969 but that's uh, that's all the way up there in the really cold waters but we have a few lows right here and right here that we may need to pay attention to so uh, let's go out in time uh, 96 as you can see right here and right here this is six days out the GFS is picking up something in the eastern pacific and in the atlantic so let's go out through time some more yep there it is it might uh I don't know if that is uh Yeah, it dissipates soon thereafter. And then I bring your attention to this thing right here. It is moving northeast. Mind you, this is June 8th. So we got a long time to watch part watch what this happens with this. But the, the GFS is showing some type of tropical system probably uh, bum rushing right into Florida southeast coast so uh, as again you take this with a grain of salt this can all change before now and then all right let's take a look at the sea surface temperatures around the world um, the Atlantic is warming up pretty nicely you have 28s and 29s starting to pop up everywhere and uh, as you can see, the uh, the warm the warm waters are starting to uh, head north, and uh, soon enough, soon enough, the main development region will be warm. That'll probably be another month or so, though. And we're definitely we're definitely warm in the uh, Gulf and Caribbean, where uh, storms this time of year usually pop up. Uh, we're going to take a look here at all the other water temperatures here. Eastern Pacific is boiling hot. We have 31 and 32 degrees Celsius waters. And uh, as you can see, this is the <coughs> Nino areas, which is uh, pretty cool, pretty cool down at this moment. And where you have a tropical cycle manga, uh, the water temperatures are actually pretty cool. So. How it's able to uh, sustain itself is pretty amazing at this point in time, especially the GFS, where it showed uh, Mongo strengthening into a, a cyclone of like Category 1 or Category 2 status, which I honestly think that the GFS is a little bit drunk on that one. I do not see that happening at this current time. But uh, we'll talk about that in the uh, evening's update, so uh, let's move forward a little bit. Here is the uh, CDAS Nino 3.4 index, and as you can see, we started we started like February at a uh, 0.3 something, 
and it just gradually went upwards and then it kind of just waned and waned and uh once we got to this area right here this is where it really started to drop off and as you can see from today's value we have a, a, a negative 0 0.320 uh, below average water temperatures in that region and it looks like we're about to head into another trend of it going downhill so uh it's going to be interesting to see over the next coming weeks how far down this actually goes this will definitely determine what kind of activity we'll have going into July, August, September, and October time frames. Because, you know, it takes a while for the atmosphere to catch up with it, whether it's El Nino or uh, La Nina. So uh, you're not going to be feeling the differences of a wider way. But uh, here in the next like month or two, we're probably going to start feeling those effects by uh, a lot of storm upticks. And um, probably some real nasty storms forming in the Atlantic. I, I wouldn't be surprised if we see at least two Category 5s this year, like we did last year. Alright, let's take a look at the uh, GOES 16 brightness temperatures. And as you can see, there's, uh, there's the storms that... Uh, this area blew up with storms last night, and they, that, that was an incredible sight to see. Like, they just came out of nowhere and just blew up, like, within an instant. And, uh, you can see the, the inter, uh, the, uh, convergence zone here. And you can see there's some impulses of energy trying to work its way up here, and right here. But, uh, I don't, these aren't going to amount to anything. So I think, until probably for another week or so. And here is uh, something that's been persistent in the Caribbean, this uh, kind of a low pressure that uh, isn't going to really amount to anything, but it's been there. And, uh, here real soon we're going to be having a Central America gyre that's going to be setting up here to uh, really kickstart the Eastern Pacific and the Atlantic because this uh, Central American gyre is going to be uh, the form two storms here, one in the East Pacific and one in the Atlantic. <clears throat> so uh, we're going to have to watch this very closely over the next week or two and see what happens with that. As far as uh, Florida goes, uh, we're going to have some cloudy weather it looks like, and uh, rain, rain chances are going to be coming back here on Monday when this thing moves closer to us. Anyways, that is all for my Atlantic tropical update, I will catch you guys this evening with an update on uh, tropical cycle manga. Alright, thank you for watching and have a nice day.